Hey guys, what's going on? So I just wanted to talk about uh, Foo Fighters Pinball real quick. Uh, I got to see the trailers, got to see Jack's stream last night. So I tend to find myself liking games a little bit more like Black Knight Sword of Rage or Iron Man and stuff like that. Stuff that's incredibly difficult, especially if I'm gonna own it in the house. And when I see this, it looks a little bit more forgiving than that, but then there's like the other element that's been added where this thing has no pop bumpers whatsoever. It is super flowy. Um, one of the cool things that's really cool is it's got seven skill shots starting out. So you can do a short plunge, you can do a full plunge. If you do a full plunge, it actually goes up a ramp and back down to your flipper. You can follow that up with multiple other shots. So it'll just like light the path that you're supposed to be taking. And as you're playing this game, there's this like thing that they call Cabo, Cabo, Combo Tron, words and stuff. And it's got all these like little zigzags and stuff that you can do with different like color tones and all that stuff, which I'm wondering if that'll be an issue for me being colorblind, but the colors seem different enough for me. I think I like this style of game. We'll have to see. It has a lot of really interesting things I haven't seen in a pinball machine. There is actually inlane targets, which are actually there from what he said to prevent people from shatsing back up the end lane. So if you try to do that, it'll just hit the target. There's a kickback target on this thing that just ever so happens to kick the ball back up in play. It's not like a, anything you could purposely hit. It just, when it gets in that area, it's just gonna, ball's gonna be in play. I actually watched a couple times last night where that kickback target actually kicked it back up into the ramp and back around to the flipper. So that was pretty cool. There's the Overlord target, which is not really, rem it's kind of reminiscent, but not really reminiscent of Attack from Mars, if you know what I mean. Like it's, it's like, yes, it's sort of like a space alien in a center shot, but it behaves differently. Instead of you hitting targets that have to drop down and you have to hit a drop target a couple times and then finally into a, uh, like, what would you call it? It's not really a gobble hole, but you know what I mean? Just a hole into the play field to blow up the saucer. This time around, it's a multi-ball mode or a series of multi-ball modes. And so when you shoot in there, there's two forks that catch it and it becomes a captive ball. And so you hit that to hit targets inside there a couple times and then it'll release and it'll start a multi-ball mode. There's apparently, I think like three in there, maybe more. That's what we saw last night was that there was three. And the rules seem interesting. So when you start the game, you kind of pick your song a little bit but it's more about kind of like building up your van. So the van, there's a van in this game that's sort of like the Turtles van or maybe like Ecto-1 or something like that where it's got like a bunch of devices and stuff that help out. And so the way that works, there's a series of drop targets. And the drop targets have like different like, like little logos and symbols and stuff for different power-ups. And when you hit a certain drop, there's a certain timed amount from what I was gathering, there's a, t a certain amount of time that you can build that up. And I think you build that up by hitting the UFO captive ball, which is a captive ball. Instead of going straight back into a target, it does a loop-de-loop. -loop. And according to Jack, if you hit that with the upper flipper, you can actually get like three turns on that to power that up. But it effectively acts like a boom button. So instead of you collecting one, two, or going up to four booms for a super boom, it sounds like you're leveling these different things up for different perks like added time, um, taking shots out and stuff like that, the more like kind of loop-de-loops you're getting, the more shots you're taking out. So I'm still a little bit confused about how those two interact with each other. And then it sounds like the playfield multiplier is also somewhat controlled based on some of the stand-ups, including those drops. So they have a full paddle target similar to what we would see like in a TMNT or something with the April or layer targets behind the drop targets. And so these drop targets are timed something like Black Knight or something like that, like the original ones. And I haven't seen timed drop targets in a long time. So apparently if you don't like start hitting them all and get them down, they'll come back up after a period of time. So if you're able to drop them all down in a period of time, then that target behind there is actually exposed. And by hitting that or hammering that a few times, you actually build up your play field multiplier. And anything else I could pick up last night, Area 51 is another multi-ball. I was kind of worried that with that upper play field, that would just be a multi-ball that would only be accessible on Premium Ellie. Turns out that's not the case. If you just hit the ramp like seven times in normal play on the uh, Pro, um, it's just got a ramp instead of an upper play field, but it will still do the same multi-ball mode. And so the whole premise of this is, is you're going around to different cities and stuff and fighting different aliens and, and different robots. Like I saw a lot of robots last night. 
But uh, yeah, I think the cities were Chicago, Seattle, um, Roswell, which was interesting, New Orleans, New York, there's Austin, DC, and eventually the Overlord mode. And I'm kind of curious on this if it's like Deadpool, so similar like on Deadpool to get all the way through the game, you need to do uh, mech suit multiball at least once to even get to the final Mr. Sinister fight, so you need that multiball mode. Along with like, you know, the things that just kind of progress along the way, like Soren, multiball and all that. I wonder if this is going to be similar since this is Tanyo's uh, code that he's writing, where you have to have the Overlord multiballs like to a certain level or all the way. But the cool thing is, is the kind of change it up here is it is non-linear. You can just go through however you want and play whatever modes you want. But to a certain extent, it's like after you get like for, through the first three initial cities of your choosing, then it'll light up Austin. And then after six, then it'll light up DC. But that's kind of the sense I was getting here is that you can't get the Overlord or maybe like some kind of sub mini wizard mode version of the Overlord unless you actually go through like all the multi-ball modes and stuff too. So it's got some interesting play to it. I can't wait to see the pro tonight. So the ladies at Hot Nudge are gonna be on Deadflip tonight streaming it. As far as art packages go, I'm, I'm gonna tell you guys right now, like I've heard some people complain about the green on the LE. I, I think it's beautiful. I love that green. I, I love that green every time I see it in every single freaking pinball machine, including Turtles. I know that was like a grape too. But from my point of view, Sometimes when I see, even with Zombie Yeti, sometimes I see like the art on a pinball machine. I'm like, ooh, I like the pro, I hate the premium and this and that, right? And even on Turtles, I don't like the Turtles premium art. I don't like that stretched Turtles logo on the side. I think just the Mausers on it, this is kind of a boring thing to me. It doesn't really appeal to me. And honestly, even with the premium or the LE of Turtles, LE of Turtles looks good. It doesn't look, like that back glass looks awesome. Um, but when it comes to my preferred art package of all those that he did, I really like uh, the Pro. I think the Pro looks the best. On Deadpool, I don't really have a preference, but I kind of prefer the Pro a little bit more. But on this one here, like whether I would, if I had, money wasn't an issue and I could either get the LE, the Premium, or the Pro, I would not by any means be upset with any of the art packages. This is one of the few times I've seen an art package on a pinball machine. And I'm just like, it looks so freaking good. It looks fantastic on every single one. I do not hate a single one of them. I don't dislike it in any kind of way. It's great looking. So Zombie Yeti just hit it out of the park with this. And apparently some of the things that was interesting here and in how the collaboration of the team worked together. So yeah, Jack's the designer of this, but the, since I got this, was a very much a collaborative effort with everybody and everybody had a real say in what was going on. And I'm not saying that doesn't happen at Stern with other machines, but it was very much emphasized here in this stream. And just little cool things like the kickback targets called Kafoom. And the reason it's called Kafoom is because that's just what Zombie Yeti just drew there and they just went with it. So as far as theme goes, the theme is, is it's a, based on a fictional Saturday morning cartoon based on the Foo Fighters, the band. And it sounds crazy. And depending on the machine you get, the pro is more like art from the cartoon where the uh, premium is more like art from the toy line. So you see like all the blister packs and stuff like that of like all the action figures and all that and all the Foo Fighters as action figures on the art and it looks really cool. The whole point of going to all these cities and playing these modes and stuff is to have band members join and have, and usually there's like a body part of a mech that they call like Foobot that accompanies them on that level. So it's like an arm, a head, a chest, a chest, piece or whatever and they form together to make the bot the fight the overlord at the end right so for me pro premium ellie ellie no way no <laughs> I, as much as i would love to have an ellie no i can't um i would love to have a premium too but we've gotten to the point for me personally that it's pretty much 10k after shipping and all that stuff and it's just too much for a pinball machine i would rather get something like a pro get some aftermarket toys, some pin, pin stadium lights, you know, you can't do the emotion or whatever they call it, the expression lights or whatever in there. And just kind of mod the crap out of the Pro and make it look nice and play nice. 
And the good news is, is I really only do that with like machines. There are some machines out there that I feel you need to have the premium for, like for instance, like Godzilla. And I do think you're getting a lot of pinball moments on the premium and you're getting that upper play field. But from what it sounds like, you're not really missing any modes. And that's a good thing. When I, when I hear that you start missing modes and stuff because you got a pro, that's when I'm kind of like, no, I'm good, you know, whatever. But there are pins out there that are like of good value that I think certain ones like TMNT was a good value pro, Deadpool's a good value pro. I definitely think Black Knight Sword of Rage is probably not just a good value uh, pro, but also like preferred. Uh, this one, while probably not preferred, I would prefer to have a premium. I'm not losing out on that much by getting a pro. But we'll have to see tonight because the pro is being streamed with the ladies of Hot Nudge. Jack's gonna be back on around the same time. I'm gonna go ahead and upload this real quick tonight and I'll let you guys know in the comments down below whether it's a yay or nay or not. But it, it seems like it's up my alley. It's kind of non-traditional in that way and I like weird stuff in my pinball. You guys let me know what you think about uh, Foo Fighters down below. I'm kind of in love with it. I think it's awesome. So uh, I'll see you guys in the next video, which will be probably, yeah, we'll, we'll keep it a secret later.